So have you ever parked your car on a hot day and come back and thought, hang on, where's all my fuel gone? There was some fuel in the tank. Where is it all gone? It must have evaporated. Well, if some of the headlines are out there are to be believed, that's exactly what's happening. Um, yeah. Is your tank secretly draining itself in the sunshine or is this just another summer scare story? Well, you know what? There may be some truth to it, but I'm going to break this down and I'm going to reveal to you how, in fact, your car is a lot smarter than you think when it comes to fuel evaporating. Stay tuned. I'll tell you everything right after this. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. Right, so let's get into your fuel tank, so to speak, and uh, bust some myths that are going around right now. Um, there's some headlines that I've seen floating around that's been trending. Um, your fuel is going to run out because your car is parked in the heat because summer is going to be really hot. I'm still waiting for the hot summer in London, I'll tell you that much. Um, and it's going to be really hot and your car, your car is the fuel that's going to be left in there. Just gonna Listen, I've lived in hot countries. You know, I've lived, I've spent half the career living in hot countries, really hot countries. I'm talking 50 plus degrees centigrade, right? I've never had fuel just vanish from the tank of a car. Um, all right, so this is, this, is what, this is what they're saying. Okay, fuel, they're saying that uh, evaporates. Okay, technically fuel is volatile. Uh, pet petrol does evaporate um, more readily and it does evaporate when it gets a little bit hotter and it doesn't need a lot of uh, hot temperature for it to uh, evaporate. In fact, uh, fuel boils, I think it's something like over 200 degrees, but it will start to evaporate even at regular temperatures. So it does do that. However, modern cars are not just, you know, um, a glorified tin can with wheels on them. They are quite smart and they have a lot of systems, you know, over the, over the you know, the, the century uh, and a bit that we have been building internal combustion engine cars, we have learned a lot about what they do and how they operate and what are the good sides and what are the downsides. And in the last 50 years or so, there is a system that has uh, been pretty much installed in every single modern car. Um, it's an evaporation recovery unit. It's called EVAP, E-V-A-P. And these have been around for decades, like I said. Um, evaporation can happen, um, but the idea that your, your tank is, is basically um, uh, steaming off your savings every time that the sun shines is a bit much, honestly. Um, and to some extent, I think it's a little bit of um, you know, tabloid heading, headlines, fuel, fear mongering sort of thing going on, really. So I just want to set the record straight on this, right? Uh, petrol does give off vapors and hot days, more of it turns into vapor inside your fuel tank. That is a fact. In older cars, the vapor could escape out of the car and hence with often with older cars and you know if you've hung out with, and if you've gone to a, a car show and you've seen some old cars on a, in a nice summer's day, then you will get the smell of fuel. It's not that there's a leak, a petrol leak or anything like that. It is the vapors that are coming out. But since the 1970s, as I've mentioned, cars have been equipped with something called an EVAP, E-V-A-P system, uh, which is short for Evaporative Emission Control System. And at the heart of this is actually a charcoal canister. It's a charcoal canister. It basically, it's like a sponge um, for, for this evaporated fuel. So what it does, it will it, it traps those vapors, it, it, it gets them and it traps them and it keeps them um, so that they don't escape into the atmosphere, one, but two, and this is where, you know, they're saying, oh, well, you know, you could, you could be wasting thousands of pounds because your fuel is evaporating. Well, two, when you are driving, the system purges the vapors from the charcoal canister uh, back into the engine for it to be burned as fuel. You know, and because don't forget, you know, this, this, the whole compression system of a cylinder is trying to compress everything to turn it into air that actually then explodes on a spark. So, you know, it's kind of what you're getting at anyway. Um, so this reduces pollution, but it keeps fuel in your car uh, and improves efficiency. So these are what these systems do. Um, so these um, uh, articles are out there saying that you might lose one to two percent of your fuel to evaporation. Well, yes. That is how much would evaporate, but that's if your EVAP system wasn't working. Um, so, or, or you just didn't tighten your cap. And I come to things that you need to be doing later on in this in this video. But you need to be tightening your cap. If it was on loosely, then yes, that that's what would happen. Um, and then that would account. You know, the reality is that that might account 
for maybe one to two pounds that you might lose over the course of a summer. So this, so I've seen a headline where it says you could be losing thousands. I mean, yeah, what they've done is they've said you're losing thousands by, uh, and even then I think that's a bit optimistic, but when you're accumulating the entire life cycle or your driving life or your driving career and they're sort of uh, adding those numbers up, but yeah, one to two pounds over the course of a summer. I'm just trying to reassure you guys that this is not something that you need to be freaking out about. And, and that's only the case, like I said, if your EVAP system is not working. And like I said, I've lived in countries where, you know, we have 40, 50 degrees plus, um, and I've never experienced a loss of fuel in a fuel tank. Um, I've never actually experienced that at all. Now, hope you're enjoying this video. Make sure to hit like, share, and subscribe if you're not already doing so. And support independent automotive journalism channels like mine. You can do that at patreon.com, coffee.com, or taking out a subscription right here on YouTube. Or you know what? Better still, you can go and buy my books. I've got three books out now. They're all on Amazon. They're all available to buy. Uh, more details on this are in the description, but buying any of these books will certainly help. Thanks so much for watching. Oh. Now, EVAP systems is a mechanical system. It is a, there's a charcoal canister. What if the system is not working? Then these systems are actually designed for the lifetime of the vehicle. So they're not meant to go wrong. They're not meant to run out. They're, they're meant to be there forever. But they, you know, like anything else, they, they could fail. They could stop working. So what is the common sign that the EVAP system might have stopped working in your car? There would be a strong smell of petrol around the car. You won't be, there won't be a leak, like I said, but you may get this smell, especially around the back. These canisters tend to be in installed near the fuel tanks because that makes the most logical sense um, which are generally at the back of the car so if you're getting a smell there then it could be that the the canister is not working um, you may get a check engine light so that might be one of the reasons why you get a check engine light because some of them have sensors that monitor the evap system and you may notice a, a, a well a significant drop in your fuel economy so um, and, if, and if this happens like i said it's probably the charcoal canister that is the problem um, that it could be there could be an issue it might have cracked it might be saturated um, and it would need replacing if it needs replacing it depends on where it is in the car and how easy it is to get to but you're looking at between 100 to 300 pounds to get that done but like I said it's rare now I'm not a mechanic I'm not pretending to be a mechanic I don't fix cars I don't work on cars so normally I don't talk about these sort of things so you should always go and consult um, a, a proper mechanic a professional mechanic if you have consent, if you smell fuel, you should always take your car to a mechanic and get them to check it out. So you should go and consult a mechanic and do what they say um, if you if you if, if they're trustworthy. Um, but honestly, if that if you have smells or if something like that, then this is what they should do. But this is from uh, from this is general knowledge that I have, and this is how that works. Now, um, the things to uh, be aware of uh, with worrying about evaporation. Now, one of the things is that, you know, people often say, this is, you get these crazy memes and things going around, and people say, oh, in summer, don't fill your tank up, because it doesn't make any difference. Now, there's two aspects to this. Now, the fact is, the fact is that in the tank, the more um, empty space that you have in the tank, in the fuel tank, the more likely that you will fill that, or it will get filled up with evaporated fuel. So the thing to do is to actually keep your tank topped up because the, in a, on, on, during hot days. So that way you're less chance of it evaporating because there's no space for it to evaporate, right? Conversely, um, you know, when you're filling your fuel tank and you can get the click and then sometimes, you know, and to be honest, I used to do this in the past as well. I'll, I'll confess until I realized that it was not a good idea is that you sometimes you try to get a little bit more in. So even after the thing clicks off and you go, oh no, let me pour a bit more in. Let me, let me top it up bad idea because that could actually damage the charcoal canister because what happens is that it could flood the evap canister so don't ever do that when it when it clicks off you know obviously some pumps i have noticed they have a problem and they click off too early but if you know and actually if the, if you get that a lot then that could also be another indication that there is a problem because there's, there's um it's there's too much pushback against there um so there could be a problem with the evap system so that's another indication but generally when your pump clicks off that means your car is full don't try and overfill it because if you overfill it you could damage your evap system um, and of course like i said before make sure that the caps are tight um, once you've filled it up make sure that you tighten that properly uh, otherwise you will have vapors escaping through there um, but anyway in most cases shouldn't be an issue like i said these systems are robust and they're designed to uh, last for the lifetime of the vehicle um, things to do to save fuel 
um, in the summer or any other time, make sure that your tires are properly inflated. So get, keep getting them checked out. Underinflated, overinflated could affect your fuel economy and efficiency. Uh, air conditioning, obviously we're all going to be using air conditioning over the summer if you're lucky enough to have a car that's equipped with that, which most modern cars are. Um, and around town, uh, you may think, well, I'm not going to use the AC because the AC does use engine power and so therefore it can use more fuel and you may think, oh, it's not that hot. I'll put the windows down around town, I'll be okay. Interestingly, on a motorway, having your windows fully closed is the most efficient way to drive because it reduces drag. Drag um, um, needs uh, increased energy to keep the car going. So when you open your windows, you increase drag, therefore you use more energy to keep your car going forward. And so on a motorway at higher speeds, you should always keep your cars and your sunroof closed. Um, so if you are trying to save money on air conditioning, no, keep the air conditioning on on a motorway and, and close the windows because that will actually work out better than trying to open the windows, which will actually make your car less efficient. Um, driving smoothly, all the usual rules about being smooth, about accelerating, braking, all of this sort of stuff, and changing gears when necessary if you're driving a manual cars at the appropriate ratios and appropriate speeds, uh, will ensure that you will, won't use any more fuel uh, than necessary. And another thing finally, which I'll just come, again, this could be an entire other video about fuel saving techniques, but just to briefly touch on them, uh, the other thing is of course weight. Um, the less weight you have in the car, the better. I don't mean kick your passengers out. If you have to carry passengers, you have to carry passengers. But for those people that tend to use their cars as an extra storage area so you put all the junk from your home into the boot of your car and then carry that around on your road trips to Wales or whatever bad idea because you're consuming more fuel um, so there you have it uh, yes petrol does evaporate that is true but um, it, your your car is not drinking it away and you're losing money it is actually going into the evap system which will then put it back into the engine as long as your systems are working correctly you really don't have to worry about it and at most if you're going to be losing anything over a course of a summer it's a pound to two pounds not the thousands that i've seen in some headlines uh, hot weather will not hurt your tank um, just don't overfill it and stuff like that but keep it topped up I think there are more things to worry about like potholes and um, congestion charging and ULEs and parking and all the rest of it than to worry about uh, fuel evaporating from your tank. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting and reassuring. If you did, um, share this video so that other people can also understand what the reality is. Make sure to hit like, share and subscribe on your way out. And if you have any experiences regarding these EWAP systems or anything else, then absolutely feel free to leave your comments below. I look forward to reading them and I'll catch you all in the next video. Shout out time guys, thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoy my content, why not get involved? Buy me a coffee. You can do that at either of these links. Or if you're watching on YouTube, buy me a thanks or take out a membership. It all helps, it really does.